Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Craig. Uh, day two of the official Trump administration. Uh, for those of you who are watching, yesterday was a busy day. Looking forward to some executive orders uh, relating to the Second Amendment. President Trump, we're all ears. We're all watching. Keep going. Today, though, we're going to talk about something that's kind of related to one of the thing, one of one of the uh, uh, topics that uh, uh, the the that President Trump has been talking about, which is national reciprocity uh, relating to concealed carry permits. But this is a story that came out of San Antonio, Texas, and it's a, uh, you know, it's 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 a. Uh, uh, it's a sad story. It's a sad story because part of the story is about, it's about two individuals who stepped up, uh, who sought to uh, uh, foil a crime, who sought to save lives. Uh, and unfortunately, one of them, uh, well, one of them unfortunately lost their lives in the process. And I'll tell you a little bit about the story. So here's what happened. So it's at the Rolling Oaks Mall in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, two individuals are robbing a Kay's jeweler. So as they come as they're coming out of the store, uh, one individual, an innocent bystander, a good Samaritan, uh, confronts the individuals in an attempt to stop the rob to stop the robbery, and unfortunately, uh, he was unarmed and he was shot and killed by one of the robbers. Seeing this, a separate bystander, good Samaritan, with a concealed carry permit, draws his weapon, shoots and mortally wounds. Uh, the individual uh, who, who shot the other guy. Uh, the other individual runs away. Uh, he winds up, you know, basically shooting wildly, and then, but eventually runs away and is eventually later captured. Now, the media has tried to use this as an example of, oh, well, see, this is what happens when you let people carry guns. It's a, it's a wild shootout in the OK Corral, and it's just not safe. But, and I really want you to think about this. Now, here it is, you had two individuals uh, who, who basically, both of which, uh, you know, th these, are, these guys are heroes. These guys are individuals who really sought to, once again, try and protect people and save lives. The challenge is and the concern here is this. One individual came prepared and the under, other individual did not. And unfortunately, the individual who didn't lost his life. Now, don't get me wrong. He is a hero, and I, and I feel for and I pray for his, his, his family and, and those that are close to him, and I pray that you know, they're comforted. But it's also important for us to understand that there was another individual there who once again came prepared. And that is the whole concept, the whole idea behind uh, allowing individuals uh, who've been properly trained and properly vetted to be able to, to, to once again, conceal uh, carry, to be able to carry on their person, to be able to defend themselves and others and their community. Uh, once again, the media tried to make it out like, oh, well, two other people got shot. Well, you know, once again, it wasn't the person who had the concealed carry permit. He didn't shoot anybody except the person who, by the way, was, probably should have gotten shot. Um, but that's the thing, and that's the whole idea, the whole concept behind concealed carry permit, behind the individual right to, to bear arms is once again to let individuals no title to let those who would seek to perpetrate uh, violent crime and crime on, on, on society to know that you know what when the police when the police are minutes away the police may be minutes away when seconds count but know that there will be citizens there who will be prepared uh, to, to uh, uh, meet you <laughs> and uh, 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 let you know that uh, well that you're not going to get away with it Anyway, that's the story for today. That's something that the mainstream media, once again, is not going to report to you. They're not going to tell you about. They're not going to give you that perspective. They're going to poise it as a shootout between a concealed carry permit holder and two bank robbers, when in reality, it is, it is a demonstration of what a, a, a citizen, a hero citizen can do when they are allowed to be properly prepared. Anyway, let's see what you folks have to say about it. I know that this is a topic that is uh, near and dear to some of your hearts, uh, especially those of you, some of us here in California, who desire to be able to, to be prepared like that, uh, but are having our rights uh, thwarted by, uh, well, by, by those who don't necessarily believe in our civil rights. Uh, Mel Scott, media always tries to twist 
the facts. Yeah, and then they accuse us of alternative facts. Have you guys noticed that phrase being bantered about? Like yesterday, it was like all over the place, this idea of quote unquote alternative facts. Now, this is coming from liberals who, one, don't believe in facts. And number two, they do have their alternative facts. They're called feelings. And no, I won't sing today. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, mainstream liars. Uh, you see the press release on Donald Trump from 2A from, Don, from Donnie Trump. He's now Donnie Trump. Uh, I did say it briefly, did not have enough time to review it before I came on today, but it will be a topic of, uh, of Coffee with Craig relatively soon. Uh, with, with or without uh, the, the CC, uh, be prepared. With or without the CCW, be prepared. Look, I, I'm just going to tell you this. I'm, I'm not going to advocate anybody here uh, break the law. But what I am saying is that we ought to make it so that individuals uh, who do desire to exercise their right to bear arms, they shouldn't be made to be criminals because they wish to do so. There ought to be a legal means uh, whereby they are able or we are able to exercise our right to bear arms. Uh, how or when will CCW be easier in California? Uh, do you guess? Uh, well, obviously, you know, most of these cases are going to work their way through the courts. And it's, it's obviously going to be uh, the courts that are going to make that decision, and, uh, uh, eventually the Supreme Court. Uh, now, there is, the con there is the talk of national reciprocity. Uh, I don't know how that is going to work its way through, through Congress. I uh, don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Uh, but, but one of those two is likely going to be the way in which we're going to be able to more fully exercise our right uh, to bear arms. It may not be through a CCW. Uh, right now, there is a lawsuit that's, tra that's challenging uh, open carry in the state of California. The key here is this is what we need answered once and for all is, do we have a right to bear arms? Or what the heck does that part, you know, right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed mean in the Constitution? Uh, through Heller and McDonald, we had the right to keep arms defined. We need a better definition of bear arms. Do we have a right to bear arms, particularly outside of our home? So that's the question that eventually has got to be answered by the courts. And then that will eventually manifest itself uh, in, in how local governments and state governments uh, actually, I won't say allow us to do, uh, how they regulate that right. Because you know in California, they're going to try to regulate it one way or another. Uh, uh, you have the right, exercise it, join the army. <laughs> Chuck sees. All right. Good recruit, good recruitment, good recruitment message. Uh, uh, any word on CCW going nationwide today? Uh, I did not see, I know that the pre, I know that there was supposedly an announcement that was sent out talking about what the president's going to do. I haven't seen it. At least I've heard that it's out there. Um, I haven't seen it yet. When I do, I'll make sure to talk with you guys about it. Obviously it'll be a topic for coffee with Craig. Um, is there anyone challenging, challenging the ammo tax? Uh, well, I don't know, Kelly, what state you're calling from. I know in California there's not an ammo tax. I know that there are folks that have been trying to introduce it in different municipalities. Um, I, I will tell you that there will be folks that will be standing up to try and challenge it. Wherever it might be, I want to believe that they're going to be standing up. Uh, if it's where we are, I can tell you right now, if it happens here in, 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 in an area where FPC is, you can bet we would oppose it. Um, unfortunately not in Cali. Uh, I think it's clearly defined. Pete Silva, I agree with you. It's clearly defined. But then again, you know, anti-gun, anti-gunners, anti-Second Amendment folks, Democrats, uh, you know, they, uh, they have their alternative facts and they kind of read it differently. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me how. Maybe they need to get hooked on phonics. I don't know. But they do have their own interpretation. Uh, uh, surrender right. <laughs> Kelly is like busy recruiting. These guys, you guys, okay, Gordon Gray, training matters beyond, uh, beyond tr required training. Uh, yes, that, that's from Gordon Gray, one of the best trainers here in Northern California. Uh, you know, training is important. Folks, here, here, let me tell you something. If you're going to exercise your right 
uh, to bear arms. If you're going to carry a firearm, if you're going to have a gun in your house, you need to be properly trained. You need to know how to use it, how to use it effectively. Um, you also need to spend some time understanding and getting trained in, in the law, understanding when is it appropriate and when it is not. When, when is it legal and when is it not? But, but understand that. And training is, folks, training is one thing to learn something. It's one thing to be taught something. Training is making it instinctual. And training only happens, or, or something becoming instinctual only happens with training. Learning, oh, by the way, training and, tra and proper training. Get that proper training and then make sure that you're spending that time, once again, renewing it, renewing it, getting it over and over again so that it becomes a response. Anyway, so yeah, proper training is, is most definitely important. Uh, that's going to be it for today for Coffee with Craig. want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, look forward to talking with you again tomorrow. Remember, this is a fight for civil rights. Use them or lose them. If you like these updates, please share them with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel.